a summary of the World War II History Museum. Okay, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, the World War II Flight Training Museum basically showcases the history of the cadets that came here to Douglas to learn how to fly uh, during World War II, to become pilots for World War II. And Douglas hosted one out of um, about 56 different schools of this type. Uh, but the neat thing that makes us special is that ours still exists. So yes. a lot of these schools no longer exist. So ours still exists. Um, intact and so our museum showcases the experience that the cadets had while they were here and then later on what they had to endure when they went on to mm -hmm. combat in World War II. Well the whole base is an absolute must-see for anyone visiting the community but um, immediately right now what we have available is the museum so give us the hours that if someone would like to come and tour. Okay, great. We're open uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, mm -hmm. so three days a week from 11 in the morning until 4 p.m. And is there an admission? Uh, we suggest a donation, mm -hmm. so we have a, a, a really small donation of $3 that we suggest, but it's really up to uh, people how much they feel like they want to give, so right. no, no pressure. Do you prefer groups to book in advance? If yes, we do. So if there's large groups, um, it's great if they call or email ahead and that just helps us prepare a little bit mm -hmm. um, but if there's a group that comes that hasn't called ahead you know we're not going to turn anybody away but you know they'll get a better experience if they've let us know they're coming. And just for those who may not know, where is the um, base located? <laughs> it's located in a three airport circle. So if you go out 441, um, we have a sign out by the road and um, we're just kind of tucked back in there on the right. And uh, we're in... Uh, on South, 441 South. 441 South, okay. yeah. And uh, the, muse the museum actually is located in uh, one of the barracks buildings there. Okay, well, neat. Well, a uh, neat contest that you all have going, like, like I said, it's a junior cadet passport activity. Um, if you will explain that to everyone um, so we'll know exactly what this contest is. Sure. So, when, you know, so when I say cadets, um, sometimes people don't know, but basically a cadet is like a military student. So the guys that were here um, training to become pilots were students. So the junior cadet is for these kids to kind of pretend like they are a military student uh -huh. learning different things um, in order to you know pass so the junior cadet uh, activity passport is basically like a, a scavenger hunt and um, I brought one along today it's just a threefold a little hunt that they can look for items in the museum and answer a few questions mm -hmm. um, and that uh, kind of get some look into details in the mm -hmm. museum and then at the end we look over everything and then they say um, an oath a junior cadet oath to become officially a junior cadet and they get a stamp of approval and then they get to take their book home with them as a souvenir and then everyone that completes the activity book um, gets to be entered into a contest for our grand prize. Mm -hmm. And what are the prizes that you have for the, associated with this contest? Well, the, the biggest grand prize is a ride in a T-34B uh, mentor uh, oh. vintage plane. So uh, if you're into That's a pretty planes, cool prize. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a single engine, you know, prop a propelled driven plane so it's a you know it will give you that vintage feel you'll go up in the air and uh, pretend like you are a cadet learning how to fly um, it, they weren't the planes that uh, the cadets here learned how to fly it's a little bit later plane uh, used in the 1950s but it still Mm -hmm. Just as cool. Vintage. And uh, the prize ride will be given out during uh, the cadet reunion in October. Oh. So the, the winners will also get to meet uh, some of the veteran cadets in person as well. Right. And being that you've said that, I guess we should let everyone know uh, uh, there's a group, and along with their family members, of these cadets who, who tra actually train here that comes back to Douglas once a year for a week-long reunion. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's so. a pretty fun time. And I know we work together with you all to coordinate um, activities for them. So we're looking forward to another great visit for them. Yeah. But on this uh, Junior Cadet Passport activity, is there an age limit? Uh, there is. And we have two different age groups um, just to make it 
you know, easy for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a beginner, which is ages five to seven. Mm -hmm. So you have to be five to start. And then the advanced is eight to 15. So we cut it off at age 15. Okay. Is there a fee for to, to get into this or just the cost associated with the museum? Yeah, it's, it's completely free. Just the donation for the museum is the only thing, but to participate in this contest, it's free. Now, what mot motivated you all to um, hold this contest for the junior cadets? Well, uh, a couple reasons. Uh, we found that we've got a lot of World War II enthusiasts and uh, plane buffs here in the area, mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted to bring them in, repeat visitor, to let them know that we're doing some new things, and uh, especially the kids like to come back and do different things every time they come. Um, and so that's one reason, just to keep it fresh. But also, we also wanted to introduce the museum to people who have never been or right. never thought they would be interested in World War II, mm -hmm. never knew we were there, and just kind of get it out that uh, we are a cool place to come and visit and maybe to get those people interested in World War II or planes um, to carry on that uh, mm -hmm. legacy because right. honestly, you know, we want to continue to keep history alive and, and make it personal and uh, remember all those people that made all those sacrifices so we could be here today. Well said. Yeah. Do you have any other activities that are family or children oriented? Uh, we do. We have some paper airplanes going mm -hmm. on so kids can come and make paper airplanes and take those home with them. Uh, we also have um, a walking tour, which for families is great. Um, I've seen a lot of families come out and work together, walk around the base. Uh, maybe a parent will read the information and the kids will have to go find it. And um, especially, hopefully, the weather will start cooling off soon and yes. it'll be nicer to walk outside. Um, but a walking tour is really popular with uh, families as well. Well, neat. Um, what about, um, I know you said you're trying to bring more awareness to the base, but people don't know, but have you tapped into the school groups yet? And if so, what is there a special rate or offer that you have for school groups? Yes, well, we, we would love for all schools to come and, and tour the museum. Uh, we've kind of put together a little education packet mm -hmm. for teachers and schools to let them know that we do school tours. Uh, so our school tours are, they match the Georgia performance standards, primarily for middle and high school, uh, but we'd love elementary schools to come too. And, um, and even if the teachers can't come on a field trip for whatever reason, uh, we want to let teachers know that they can go on our website. We've got lots of resources that they can use in their classroom, activity sheets, um, photographs, um, pictures, you name it, that they can incorporate World War II into their um, studies. And, uh, but if they can come on a field trip, that's even better. Yes. And uh, it's free, completely free. And that's uh, about an hour to an hour and a half. They get to see the museum and the hangars. And another new thing is we're doing uh, a reenactor. So they can choose to schedule uh, a woman air service pilot or WASP reenactor. Oh. And that person will dress up like they are a female pilot and kind of show the museum through her eyes. Uh, so we hope some schools come and and give that a try. That is very neat. Um, what are some of the more interesting artifacts or exhibits uh, that you have at the museum? Just to share with everyone as like a little teaser or something yeah. to get them out there. Well, um, everyone has their their favorites, you know, uh, but uh, I think the two that stand out the most for me is the Link Trainer, which is an early mm -hmm. simulator. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like a little miniature plane that the cadets would get in and learn how to fly. You know, it never took off. It was just a simulator on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and here at the base, they had a whole building of these simulators. And uh, we have one in our museum. So that's pretty cool to kind of see. Uh, the other one is the Norden bomb site. And um, that was America's second top secret weapon. And um, it was kind of a really, everybody wanted to have it but the United States was the only people that had it and it basically helped precision bombing. So it was really top secret, uh, really important, and we have one in the museum. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody loves the guns. We have multiple types of guns. And yes, I won't, you do. <laughs> I won't go into that. People have to come and visit and see what we have. But uh, every time we go into that war in the air room, people are just like, wow, you know, they love those guns. So. I know, uh, maybe it was about a month ago, uh, we had a gentleman visit from the state 
um, tourism um, and uh, cultural office and he really gave a great compliment to the museum that um, it was very precise and laid out and you didn't overdo it and you didn't underdo it it was just uh -huh. right uh, a nice documentary if you would say of the history on that base so That's I do convene y'all it's very clean fresh and, and laid out very very well and well kept oh, um, so now, here's the question that we always <laughs> ask any service organization. Do you need volunteers? Yeah. So well, what are you looking for in a volunteer? Well, absolutely. But, uh, you know, those compliments to our museum, it's wonderful to hear because our museum is mostly operated by volunteers, mm. put together and mostly maintained by volunteers. And we really love our volunteers. We have a small but mighty crew of volunteers, but we're always looking for more. And uh, we're hoping to, like I was saying, ramp up our school tours. So we're looking for people who are interested in helping with the school tours, uh, maybe wanting to you know, do a school tour or help if we have a big group. Also during special events, we could always use an extra hand around. Um, but we're also interested in getting groups to come in to do group projects like uh, civic groups or a high school group if they want to come in and um, do some project and, and we're pretty open to, you know, what creative ideas people might have. Yes. So, um, you know, we, we've got something for everybody. I think, but um, we couldn't do it without our volunteers, that is for sure. Okay. Well, I tell you what, this Junior Cadet program, going back to that, I, I'm not sure, and if I did ask you, forgive me, is there a deadline? I know you said oh, you're going to yeah. try to do, um, give a uh, award the, with the flight when the cadets come uh, back for their reunion tour, but is there a deadline? Right, right, there is. That's a, a good point. Uh, we're running it until September 5th, so okay. that Labor Day Saturday, kind of the unofficial end of summer. Um, so the contest will be done on that Saturday. So kids still have a couple weeks to come in and get it done. But even after that Saturday, we're still going to have the activity, so kids can still do the activity. Uh, we're just not going to have the drawing yeah, contest yeah. part of it, if okay. that makes sense. Well, sounds great. Um, before you leave today, um, I hope we've covered all your que questions that we, the community may have. But share with everyone um, your contact information, whether if you have a website for the flight World War II flight training base, as well as a phone number or email address. Okay, great. I brought my little cheat sheet here just to make sure I didn't mess up. Um, our phone number is 912-383-9111 and we answer the phones during open hours Thursday through Saturday. Always leave a message and we'll call back. Or our website which is fantastic. You could spend forever on there looking up history and that is www.flighttraining.org or send us an email at Douglas. 63rd at windstream.net. So all three ways to contact us uh, will work. All right. Well, Kelly, thank you for being here and sharing the information today. Yes. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll be back with more Douglas on my mind right after this break. Don't miss the South Georgia Outdoor Expo in Douglas. It starts with a wild game supper with Dr. Griff Lindsay as the guest speaker on Falconry. Then two days of fun activities for the whole family, including the Ultimate Outdoors World Record Exhibit, Captain Clint Roberts and the Kraken Dave Stone of the Dreadnoughts from the TV show Axemen, Georgia Southern University's Center for Wildlife Education's American Bald Eagle and their Reptiles and Raptors show, Fishing Workshop with Burt Diener, Turkey Culling Contest, Ziggy's Comedy Magic Show, and more. You could win a $500 jackpot, a Synergy Cargo Trailer, or other great prizes. This show is brought to you by these great partners. Don't miss it. WDTV 13. Programming is sponsored by Vickers Audio and Glass Tinning. Supporting our local programming on WDTV 13. Stort Solutions Etc. Locally owned and operated and located at 1010 Bowens Mill Road, southeast in Douglas. American Truck Parts Incorporated. A proud sponsor of WDTV 13 programming. Harper & Company Builders, serving Douglas and Coffee County for 29 years. And a proud sponsor of community programming. Aiden's Minute Market. When you're out, we're in.
Roscoe Allen Jr. and Gubas Modular Buildings in Osceola, Georgia. We proudly support local programming on WDTV 13.